Afternoon. Uh, busy day so far. Uh, I just want to at least start this by saying we've had a, uh, I think, really productive collaboration with the city of San Francisco. Uh, yesterday, I'd asked to meet with the mayor this morning, and we did have that meeting this morning, and it was very, I would say it's very cordial. It was very constructive. I hope she feels the same way. I think she does. And we, uh, you know, at the conclusion of that meeting, felt that it was uh, really important that we express our, you know, greatest level of cooperation possible and collaborating with them on coming up with the policy that affects not just the Warriors, but uh, but all events uh, at Chase Center over at least the next two weeks. Um, we don't know what happens. Uh, after that, the city will reevaluate their position. Uh, I was in touch with the NBA immediately after the meeting with the mayor, and uh, the NBA agreed the best way forward for us was to play tomorrow night's game uh, without fans. So that is what we're planning to do. Uh, there is, as has been widely reported, uh, a call with all 30 teams this afternoon where uh, the league will conduct a discussion about the way forward for our season. Uh, as San Francisco has really uh, been the first domino to fall here, uh, I think there's a lot of speculation that, that other cities will look at what San Francisco is doing and we potentially could have other NBA cities affected the way we are uh, in the not too distant future. So it's a developing story. Uh, we don't know how it's going to end. And, uh, you know, you'll, you will probably know as soon as we know a lot of the information that's going to come forward from here. So you want to talk about our team? Yeah. Um... You know, this is this is brand new stuff for for myself, Rick, our players. I'm sure everybody here and listening or watching. But um, we've been taught since we were young, and and rightly so, that health is the first priority in life, and that's that's what we message to our players. Uh, there, a lot of them have families, have parents, have kids, and understood uh, what's going on here. And it's bigger than the Warriors, and it's. It's a, it's, it's a serious situation. And so there's a lot of different opinions on what should be done, what could be done, but I think we would all agree. It, and, and we're also always taught it's better to be safe than sorry. So we're choosing that course along with the city. And Rick's done a tremendous job uh, trying to figure this all out. And uh, it hasn't been easy because the ground is shifting under our feet. Uh, I, I expect that to continue to happen. But as far as the response of our coaching staff, our players, it was it was it was somber. Uh, th this is not something I imagine any of them ha have ever done or will have to do. Um, they're professionals. They're human beings. We'll be okay. Uh, we feel for the workers, mostly uh, the low-income wage earners that count on working our games. I think if you're going to have empathy, have it for them, not for us. Um, we play basketball. You know, it's, it's a big business, but we're just playing basketball. There's a lot more important things going on out there. So um, luckily we have good leadership in Rick and, and our owner, J Joe and Peter. Steve Kerr is a, a great steward that we have to lead our players. Um, but this is it's a hard, it's a sobering moment to, to, to enter into this kind of unknown. And um, we're just like you guys. We'll, 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 we'll do the best we can as information becomes more available. I, I, I want to follow up on Bob's point because I think it really, we have 1,500 part-time employees who uh, have their jobs because of Chase Center and the events that we have here. And, and for me, this is the hardest part because we do have a, a number of those who live paycheck to paycheck, who this is going to impact uh, a lot more. It's going to impact our players, me or Bob or anybody in this room. So. Uh, I don't want that to get lost in the conversation about what something like this means in terms of its impact to our city because it goes way beyond the, the core business of playing NBA basketball games for sure. All right, we've got a question. Raise your hand. We will bring you the microphone. Rick, uh, San Francisco officials certainly made it known publicly uh, that they were looking for this maybe even a little earlier. Uh, was there discussion, was that, was that opinion made known to you that San Francisco officials wanted maybe even last night's game or even Saturday's game uh, to fall under this? Uh, 
you know, we were given a heads up on the, the city's directive before it happened, I'd say probably in communications with the mayor's office 10 times a day. Uh, we implemented CDC guidelines two weeks before that declaration by the city. This is the cleanest arena in the world. Uh, and we did not feel best based on the best advice that we could get that anyone was being put at risk. Uh, and so every day these change. We said at the same time, this circumstances change every day, and I, I feel the circumstances have changed. And, you know, what, we, what I want to express to the mayor today uh, was just like we're in this together. We're all in this together, and we're going to do whatever we can to to uh, cooperate and do the responsible thing. So I, I, you know, we we felt there was a tipping point, and and we're at that tipping point. And whether or not this is the right course of action, the wrong course of action, you know, somebody will come back a year from now and decide whether the decisions that were made were smart at the time they were made them, and and hopefully, uh, hopefully we're doing the right thing. How on the table was canceling the game altogether, and how on the table do you think it still is moving forward for the league? Yeah, impossible to know, right? Uh, there was no discussion of canceling tomorrow night, either with the city or, or you know, with essential personnel only, uh, or with the NBA. So that that didn't come up. It wasn't raised in our discussion. But you know, this afternoon's call, and I'm sure a lot of calls after that will determine what what the way forward is going to be. Oh, you were talking about the impact on your low, uh, your your wage employees, the ushers, people like that. Is there anything the team can do to, uh, you know, soften that blow? And I know I'm like I'm asking you guys to play Santa Claus, but yeah. you know, you, you well, understand I, I what I mean. I think you're seeing it both at the city level. I, I hope you see a lot of it, it, it uh, in terms of things that may change related and federal government actually. Even our federal government's talking about some some changes in. Uh, the way taxes are assessed and things like that, that would be a, uh, of help. I, you know, I, we're going to be supportive in any way we can. It, it's like we, we have a business model that depends on hosting live events. Uh, so we're in a, we're in a tough spot there, but I, I think, you know, we're all in this together. The, our government has, I think an obligation here, our city government, our county government, our, our federal government, our state, to understand the impact, not just on our 1,500 workers, but on the thousands of other workers that fall into exactly the same category. And, and you know, I, I hope we are sympathetic to that, and I hope we do things that are going to help. Rick, Rick, the statement said no fans, but does that mean no, literally no fans, or might there be some let in? Yeah, I, I, it's a work in progress. This is a couple hours old, so I can't tell you exactly. I, I don't anticipate any fans now. You know, I, th I don't know if I get to go. I hope I do. I assume Bob has to go. Uh, so there'll be people there who are interested in the game who aren't playing. But I don't think uh, we're not anticipating like having some subset of our existing season ticket holder group attend or anything like that. What, uh, what about the media, Rick? Actually, uh, Raymond's in touch right now. I don't know that we've got a definitive. Yeah. Oh. Uh, can you tell us anything about the what the game experience is going to be like? You're going to have a PA announcer. You're going to have. You might be better to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, it's uh, if you're here, I'll be there. Um, very, very imperfect environment to compete in. But again, I'm not, I don't want to prioritize. We'll be fine. But as far as how we're going to do it, we engaged our players. You know, do you want music? You want it before? I mean, I, I don't think we're going to pretend like fans are there. Uh, you know, I've never been to a game without fans. Um, so I don't know that any of you have. We're, we're going to try to it, – It'll. I imagine it will be – it's just going to be so different. I mean, I, 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 mean, I we'll have a we'll have a stats crew. Yeah. We'll have a PA announcer to help explain what's going on during the game if there's uh, Foul things that have to guy. be explained. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll have statistics on the scoreboards. We'll have radio and television broadcasts. That will happen. But beyond that, uh, you know, as Bob said, in consulting with the players, they kind of think it's weird not to have at least some. They have music during practice. So they'd like some music when they're warming up. They'd like. Oh, that. Some. Was that what the, the basic input from the players was that they would like to have some sound? Yeah, I mean, look, they're a little bit, 
you know, we just hit them with this in real time. So it's not as if they had the evening or they may show up tomorrow at shoot around with some ideas and say, hey, we thought about it. And uh, we were wondering if we could do X and, and we'll comply as much as we can. But also this is, there's a seriousness to this too. So it's, we're trying to balance being civil and um, respectful of what is happening. And also we're playing a game, but we're gonna play the game. And there's a lot, you know, we, we may not be in a position where we are competing for a playoff spot, but, but Brooklyn is. So, and there's many teams out there that are. So how, there's, there's a competitive component that you have to respect, uh, that's, that, that you have to respect the league. Um, our players are professionals, so they have, just like we would have to go to work under um, not ideal conditions. But we do want to listen to them um, and hear them. And if we can do things that make their evening or work product a little bit better, we'll do it. But I, I honestly, Scott, I think it's, you know, there's no T-shirts getting shot into anywhere, which is it's going to be very, very different, very different deal. I, I, can I go back to Tim's question? Because I, I want to feel like I'm giving the most honest answer I can give. You know, one of the complications here, in addition to the employees that are depending upon us, is you know, we are in a 30-team league, and every decision that's being made in the Bay Area right now not only is going to affect every other team in the NBA, it's going to affect every other team in other sports that are in season right now. So we take that responsibility really seriously, too, and want to, you know, have been in touch with, I can't even count the number of teams and, and other leagues that we've been in touch with. So this is, a, this is a big deal. This step is a very, very big deal. And we feel like we're making it at the appropriate time, but it's going to have effect on, on other teams and other leagues as well. Uh, just to follow up on that, then could you see playing, you know, changing up, and let, you know, until San Francisco says something, will, will they lead the way on when you can have a crowd back at a game? Sure. No, we've we've told the city we're following their direction, their guidance. And Bob, uh, after this game, you'll be going on a team will be going on a road trip. Is there concern? I mean, whether whatever cities are, whatever, however the news breaks, that you'll be putting your players and coaches and staffers through airports and through buses and into different arenas that may have sure. fans at them too. There's a concern um, right now in this room. There's a concern about getting on a play. Yeah, absolutely. And as that information, that's again to fall back on Rick. There's a, there's not this isn't. A, the Warriors, there's, there's 30 teams, so I don't know. We'll follow the NBA's lead. We'll follow the health officials' lead. We'll follow the government, the CDC, the WHO. Um, but to sit up here and say there's not concerns, I'm concerned today. I'm concerned tomorrow. We all should be concerned. A week from now, two weeks, are we all living appropriately? Are we, who are we listening to? Um, so I don't know, Tim. I mean, that, that's the honest answer. But, yes, I'm concerned about all of us. I mean, you're seeing what's happening around the world in other leagues. So this is the start. I don't surmise that this is the only thing that's going to happen in our sport. I just don't foresee the Warriors aren't having fans, but that, and that's the end of the issue. I, 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 don't, I think that's a little naive. This is obviously still such an unknown, and the human aspect is what matters most, but how do you see this potentially affecting you know, revenue and, uh, you know, salary, you know, future salary caps, particularly if, you know, you got to cancel games in, in the future. We don't know, right? Our, our player compensation system is based on basketball-related income, and this will affect basketball-related income, just like the, the other issue we've had in China over the course of the year has already affected basketball-related income for, for this season and who knows going forward. So it's part of our, you know, there's, there's a – there's a formula that, that calculates that that's our agreement with the players on how they're compensated. So I think we have to – we don't know. We don't know what the impact's going to be. There, the, the answer is – the answer we do know is it will. Yeah. To what degree, nobody knows. Um, it was reported that uh, potentially you guys would play games in places where there might not be um, outbreaks. Would you be um, behind that plan if that were to come to fruition? Would you – I, you know, I don't think we're here to speculate on what the NBA might decide to do. I'm sure we're going to be in complete agreement and support whatever the NBA does decide to do, but I don't want to speculate on what that might be. Bob, you mentioned that the atmosphere amongst the players was somber. Did any of the players or coaches express to you either an unwillingness or an uneasiness to continue playing 
given what's going on right now? No, nobody. Again, I mean, it's we we, we shouldn't judge anybody's immediate reaction. Um, I think to kind of blindside somebody and. I, don't, I think everybody was aware of the possibility, but then for it to become a reality, uh, which it was, I think a lot of players and coaches and even even us who may have had an idea this could have been a possibility, um, it was more of, um, wow, you know, this is really happening. Nobody said, I don't want to play. Nobody said, but again, that's in fairness to them and anybody, these these things are, it takes a little time to process how to react to them, what's the appropriate reaction. So uh, no, no, no discussions like that occurred. But we will give room to those discussions should they arise. Also in the statement, Rick, there, was the, there will be issued refunds for tickets for tomorrow's, uh, for tomorrow's game. And is that an immediate payout? I mean, you're just going to refund the money, or is it for maybe credit to next season? Yeah, the process is still being worked out. But uh, I think at least the season ticket holders we've been in touch with are want to credit their next season's tickets but we're providing an option what what you know we're we're responding individually to what they want to do and obviously health and safety is always the most important concern but is it safe to say that this is potentially a multi-million dollar loss for the Warriors tens of millions of dollars yes uh, uh, multi-million dollars for one game Rick, I know you talked about this to some extent about being one in a, in a group of 30, but is there any type of conversations about a consensus uh, for the entire league at this point or having those types of discussions at this point yet? That's the purpose of the call this afternoon that we're having with all 30 teams.